just now. Wall Street Journal reveals that Russia has been providing targeting data to the Houthis for their attacks on ships in the Red Sea. Data was passed through members of Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps who are embedded with the Houthis. The assistance, which hasn't been previously reported, shows how far Russian President Vladimir Putin is willing to go to undermine the U.S.-led Western economic and political order. Salient reminder as we learn that Russia is actively collaborating with Houthi terrorists. Russia has spent a decade smearing the Syrian opposition as U.S.-backed terrorists. One of the suspected crew members of the plane downed in Sudan was Viktor Granov, associated with arms dealer Viktor Bout, reports Reuters. The news agency identified at least two Russians thought to have been on board the plane by matching footage shared by the rapid support forces of their IDs with social media profiles. One of them, 67-year-old Viktor Granov, was living in South Africa, as shown on his LinkedIn account and Russian court records. According to the report by the rights group Amnesty International, Granoff ran two airlines accused of violating an arms embargo in the Democratic Republic of Congo. An overview of destroyed Russian equipment on the road of death between Snagost and Zelenyi Shliak in the Kursk region. The recent Ukrainian incursion into the Kursk region has laid bare the glaring weaknesses of the Russian military, exposing significant flaws in their strategy, equipment, and overall readiness. Despite being touted as a powerful military force, Russia's inability to fend off the Ukrainian advance has resulted in substantial losses of personnel, equipment, and even prisoners of war. The sheer number of destroyed tanks, armored vehicles, and artillery pieces paints a grim picture of a military that appears unprepared and disorganized. The scale of the equipment losses has been particularly embarrassing for Russia. What was once considered a formidable force is now struggling to protect even its own territory from a much smaller adversary. Ukrainian drones and artillery have consistently obliterated Russian armored columns, demonstrating a lack of effective countermeasures and exposing Russia's vulnerability to modern asymmetrical warfare. These losses are not limited to hardware. The number of Russian soldiers killed or captured has been staggering, with each new wave of POWs serving as a testament to the mounting failures on the front lines. The Kursk operation has also highlighted the inadequacies in Russian air defense. Numerous instances have shown that their own systems are more dangerous to Russian aircraft than to Ukrainian forces, with friendly fire incidents and the inability to intercept Ukrainian strikes further eroding confidence in their capabilities. This is not how a regular army operates. This is simply a slaughter, as Russian units find themselves repeatedly ambushed and decimated by Ukrainian forces who are capitalizing on Russian disorganization and poor coordination. The collapse of the so-called elite units, such as the Marine Brigades that were once brought in with high expectations, underscores just how fragile Russia's military reputation has become. These units, often regarded as Russia's most capable, have failed to live up to their billing, suffering heavy casualties and accomplishing little in the way of meaningful resistance. The irony is palpable, as many of these brigades previously bragged about their brutal tactics, only to find themselves outmatched and overwhelmed. A well-known Russian military medic and fascist who called for the extermination of Ukrainians has recorded an appeal to Defense Minister Belusov, complaining about the serial killings of personnel in the form of meat grinder assaults that are becoming widespread. It's quite amusing, but the questions aren't even for Belusov, but for his direct patron, Mr. Putin, for whom human life except, of course, his own, means absolutely nothing. For the sake of his ambitions, he won't hesitate to engage in any kind of meat grinder assaults. Am I being too dramatic when I say the country is doomed? First of all, I want to tell you something. Maybe you are uh, blocked by scum, uh, traitors, enemy spies from everywhere, and this information just doesn't reach you. So I wanted to let you know that serial killings of personnel under the guise of so-called local assaults have become widespread now. At the same time, at the same time, firstly, I want to remind everyone that uh, who start talking nonsense, like why not go on the assault, sit down. Heck, read the book, read the military instructions, listen.
If you can't read, I suspect many can't. People with combat experience. Assault. This is a complex combined operation. It is the ultimate culmination of offensive actions and the assault is conducted as follows. Thoroughly recon the enemy's defensive positions, construct a model of them on the ground, where personnel repeatedly practice each phase of the assault, detailing the positions and roles of neighbors on the right and left. Mutual recognition signals, fire support means, and operational intelligence resources that are involved in the assault. And only after all this has been thoroughly rehearsed is the actual assault conducted, just so you know. I mean, the late uh, Goodwin and Ernest's writings, uh, Heavenly Kingdom, there's none of that. Go forward without maps, without knowing the neighbors, to the left, right, without fire cover. An hour together and a group of five men with light weapons, or six, I don't remember, sorry. They were sent to, sent to die and go there and die. Uh, that's how it is, that's not an assault. That's group murder under prior agreement with aggravating circumstances. So remember that. Because the difference between how a real assault looks and go to the enemy positions, I want you to die, is stark. I think anyone who has ears and heard will understand. Rhein Metall has handed over 20 additional Martyr 1A3 IFVs to Ukraine. The delivery was completed at the end of the third quarter of 2024. This brings the total number of combat vehicles delivered directly to Ukraine, or in the context of so-called ring exchanges, to around 200. Until 2022, butter was supplied to Russia from all over the world, but then imports decreased by 10 times from 40 to 4,000 tons. After 2022, only Belarus remained as a supplier of butter to the Russian market, and it is not able to fully meet the demand, although its goods make up 15% of all Russian dairy products. Minsk also paid attention to the crisis and decided to make money on it. The Ministry of Agriculture and Food of Belarus raised prices for certain types of goods sold under foreign trade contracts with Russia 12 times in a year. The Russian Ministry of Agriculture decided to follow a familiar path, purchasing butter in friendly countries. Butter imports from Iran have started, and more is expected from India. The photo shows butter in special containers with security chips in Russian stores. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.